Well, I am done building greasy motors. I just went through, cleaned these cases up as good as I could. I mean, no, I didn't get in that little pocket, but whatever. <laughs> Looks way, way better. So pretty happy with that. Okay, I haven't been doing a whole lot of video because I'm just trying to get stuff done. The whole bottom end, I've reassembled. Cases are resealed. I use Yama Bond. This is the shit. I mean, it's, I guess it's the same as like Honda Bond or Free Bond or whatever the hell, but I have a Yamaha dealer right down the street, so it's real convenient. So I use that. Cases are sealed, brand new crank seals, and we are going with brand spanking new Pro X brand pistons. These are good shit. These are not as cheap as, let's say, SPI or SP1, whatever the hell and some other knockoff brands. These are, I would say, as good quality as OEM. Very, very, very nice. So, this is the brand I went with. Standard bore. These pistons came with new circ clips, the wrist pin bearing, the wrist pin, and in here, obviously, you have your brand new rings. So I'm gonna go ahead, get this piston assembled, get that put on, and we're going to be moving forward with getting the top end put together on this motor. Okay, for those of you who haven't done this yet, correct way to do this, put the ring in. Use your piston to slide it down. You want it to be half inch or so. Half inch is a good place to start just to check the ring gap. And you will take feeler gauges. Here, I don't know if you can see, but this is a point zero one zero, and that is as big as I can fit in my ring end gap here. I cannot fit the next size up. Point zero one zero is too tight, I think, so we're going to open them up a little bit to like 14 to 16 thousandths and run that. That way, we don't run risk of butting up the rings, them expanding out. And catching a port taking out a fresh top end which would be a super bummer all right so i went ahead i opened up my ring end gap to the point where i could fit a 16 thousandths but not the 17 thousandths so i am way way happier with that so that ring is good to go i'm gonna go ahead and check the other ring that will be going in the cylinder and once that's done, I'll be good to put one side of the top end together. And then I got to start the whole process over with the other cylinder and the other set of rings. So I'm trying to do this one right. I know you guys see me do a lot of like half ass, just slapping them together and send them with used pistons and everything. This one, I've gone through sealed, crank seals, checking the gaps, new rings, pistons, bearings, the whole nine. Because I want this pile <laughs> to actually be reliable so i would like to have a 700 where i can just rip the cord and just go not even care and uh i think this one's gonna be it so we're doing this one right okay that ring there is specked out to 16 thousandths this ring right here i took it's down to 17 thousandths but that's okay because uh we were just looking at it if I remember right, the specs are 14 thousandths to 20 thousandths. So I'm now within spec for each of these. That one out of the box was 10 thousandths of an inch. This one was nine thousandths of an inch. Both were too tight. So that is definitely something you guys are gonna wanna check with these, uh, well really with any piston. I don't care who makes it, but I know these ones do come just a hair tight, which in my opinion is better than too loose. Cause I can always take material off, but I cannot add it. So. These two rings here are good to go on a piston and be installed on the bottom end. By the way, it is snowing. Oh, <laughs> winter is here, boys. Anyways, now that that's out of the way, part sled, 700. I got cool parts off this, and I'll show you guys in a second. Protect it. As long as it's cold outside, put your wrist pin outside. Cold makes the metal contract. It will be 10 times easier to slide that in place once it's cold. Also, I just happen to have a set of cases with a bunch of two-stroke oil in it. I was kind of using it to roll cranks in 
lubricate the bearings and whatnot. Well, you know, we got the mess going, but it works out perfect. So I put my wrist pin in there, roll it around. I get all the needles nice and coated in oil before I put it in the rod. Just to demonstrate why we get the wrist pin nice and cold, slides right through. Don't have to use a install tool or a hammer like me. Slides right in, slides right out. Just like that, circ clips installed. You want the gap to be at the bottom or the top, never off to the sides or crooked or nothing like that. That way they are less likely to fall back out. That's one side done. Now I have to go through and gap the rings on my other piston, wherever it is. Is that my manual? Nope, I have no idea where it is. Anyways, I'm gonna get the other one done. Okay, so I'm on my last ring. I'm gonna show you guys exactly how I do it all the way through. So this one, unmodified. Let's put this in the cylinder. And like I was saying, I do kind of do it the wrong way because I don't have specialty tools to gap or cut them down. But I just get it in there and you want your piston or your rings about half an inch into the bore. So I go down to the ring groove in the piston that and I try to make sure I'm even all the way around just ever so slightly so that way we know the rings are sitting flat inside the cylinder and there if you got your feeler gauges uh I already know it's not gonna be that big so we're gonna flip through ten thousandths that might fit that's about the biggest I've seen out of the box already. So, it's 10,000. See if I can get it to slide between the gap. Yep. It's tight. It's, it's rubbing pretty good, but 10,000 will go in. We need a 14 to 20 thousandths of an inch. So that <laughs> definitely ain't going to cut it. And let's, let's jump to a 12, let's see if 12 will clear. Nope, I cannot get a 12 in the gap. So go ahead and get rid of those. Work the ring back out. If you're a true professional, you would be lubing the cylinder as to not score it. I just had this thing coated in penetrating oil, so it should be all right. So I was cleaning up the bore with a little oil. So, I'm not sure if you guys can see this. But you see these two little tabs sticking off the end? We're going to go ahead and knock some material off of those. Because that's what is closest to contact. The way I do it. <clears throat> Don't laugh. An old, wore out, flappy sand disc. It takes off very small amounts of material. I just have to be careful. Try to get it as squared up as I can works out. It's the wrong way, but it does work. small amounts off and I put it back in and I check it again I guarantee this won't be within spec or if it is it's not going to be where I want it to be but seeing as I couldn't get a 12 in with how little material I take off each time this will probably be a 12 or 13 I would guess when I say 12 or 13 I mean 12 or 13 thousandths of an inch and I want 14 to 20 thousandths even all the way across around let's pull a gap on this thing yep 
full fits, which means we did take a little bit of material off. Let's go ahead, skip 13, go straight to 14. Just because. Ah. Nope, 14 does not fit, which means we're currently at a 12 to 13 thousandths inch. Because I didn't check 13, but I know 14 doesn't, 12 does. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the ring. Just take a little bit more material off. And I'm going to continue this process until I'm 16 to 18 thousandths. Nice in the middle. I'm shooting for 17. But uh, yeah, that's how I get my rings. It's, like I said, it's the wrong way. I take my time. It does take a bit of time to do this, especially the way I'm doing it. Because I don't have the proper tool to perfectly do it. So I got to eyeball and make sure I'm getting everything nice, squared up. And uh, just keep on checking. That's all you can do, man. Just a little side note, lettering on the rings. 99% of the time faces up and the arrow will face towards the exhaust side or the mag side. I've never seen an arrow point intake or clutch side. So, so keep in mind. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put one circlip in. I'm going to do this side so the arrow's pointing this way. So I know that goes to the exhaust. I want to put the circlip on this side first. That way my wrist pin will come in from this side, won't be hit the way of the other piston, anything like that, and it will make life much easier. Look at that, these are still hiding out in there. I guess I'll show you guys this. So I like to start with the side away from the wall first. So I get it started like that. Start pushing her down. I have a tiny little screwdriver. I just start to work it. All the while, I'm applying pressure with my thumb to keep it from falling out. We're pushing back out of the groove. Once I get to this point, I can just take my thumbnail, install it all the way fully seated in its groove. That's how I put it in the circlip. Just like that, both pistons are installed. Shoot, boy! Badass, look forward to having this thing done. Look forward to have that thing running good instead of, well, the shit that it has in it now. <laughs> okay, cylinders are on. Everything is very, very well lubed. <laughs> Lots of oil on assembly. That's kind of my theory. But she's all together. She spins nice and smooth. Hell yeah. Now we get to move on to heads. Oh, that's a tough one. I have like a really cool legend head set up. I don't know what the domes are for. They have an A on them. But this is by far my favorite looking head ever. <laughs> Just, it is. That's my favorite looking head. I have, ugh. I got the old school SLP power domes. I mean, I got cheater heads, I got all kinds of shit. And do you know how hard it is for me to put a stock head on this thing? Well, that's what that's what we're gonna do. Going for that. Stock reliable. Pull the cord, know it's gonna go. Boy, that's depressing. <laughs> 